they're going to give us, and I'm quickly going to write them both down, the how to compute the first derivative dy dx and the second derivative d squared dx squared. That's why, why is this 2 on the d and the t it's on the x? It's not a fraction. It's the second derivative operator applied to y. Anyways, we're going to give a formula for these two guys, dy dx and d squared y dx squared. How are they getting that? They just plunk it in the book usually, but it's the chain rule is what we're using. We're going to say y is a function of x, and then x is a function of t. So we have, if I want to take dy dt, that's inside outside functions, but in Leibniz notation, to take the derivative of dy dt, that will be the derivative of the outside, evaluate the inside, times the derivative of the inside with respect to t. So I get the chain, this is the chain rule. And now I just solve for the one I want. This says in parametric form, dy dx is equal to dy dt, which isn't a fraction, over, this is the fraction, dx dt, not a fraction. That's the first derivative in parametric form, which they give in the book and in the notes, but they're getting it from the chain rule. For this one, this is the first derivative for the second derivative. Basically, I won't derive it, but uh, what a lot of the books like to tr do is try to make this simplified and write y prime equals dy dx. But basically, what we're going to do is d squared y dx squared is going to be the derivative with respect to t of dy dx, this guy, over dx dt. I find, for me, and for people that I've shown thus far, this is not what the book says. The book says, put the y prime there. I'm going to, y introduce more notation. We've just given dy dx as a horrible thing. You have to remember in this symbol, this is now opened up into a more horrible thing. When we do an example, you'll see what's going to happen with this one. I'll let that percolate in your brain first, and then the first example I'm going to do only uses this one. I'm not going to use this one next. I'll use this one in the second example. So try to remember what that's saying. Once in a while, just memorize these. I didn't say it. Example, this is a hyperbola hidden in parametric form. Find the back to square one when we did calculus way back in the, 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 but now we have a curve which is not the graph of a single function. Find the equation of the tangent line to this is gamma at the point. Using the derivatives, what we're going to do is we're going to also phrase this in the day one types, not exactly day one stuff. We had to do functions and then limits and then derivatives, but pretty well day one stuff. Equations of tangent lines. The slope of that tangent line is the derivative, but now we have a parametric curve in parametric description, so we're going to have to find the derivative using the parametric formula. What is that? dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. That is equal to dy dt is what's the derivative of secant? No, that's x. This is y. What's the derivative of tan? That's correct, secant squared t. What's the derivative of secant? That's correct, secant, it's rhetorical, secant tan x, or I don't know who I'm talking to. Stop talking to them, I told you to shut up. And then one of these is going to cancel, and so we're going to get secant t over tan t. What do I get now? They gave us, now I have the derivative at every point or in every parameter value. Now it told me the parameter value was t equals pi over 4 and I have a point where that happens, and then I'll have a slope, and then I build a line. So that says dy dx evaluated at pi over 4 is equal to secant of pi over 4 over tan of pi over 4, which is what's secant of pi over 4, that's correct, root 2, and what's tan of pi over 4, we already went over this, 1, so we get root 2, so the slope is also root 2. What does that give me? I have a point, and now I have a slope, which is the square root of 2. I can build that equation of that line. 
the only thing we had was we needed to use this for the parameterization. The scenario didn't change other than the description of the curve we now used to do the same process on. This tells me that y minus 1 equals the square root of 2, x minus root 2, or you can write this as y equals root 2, x. Don't skip steps. I'm skipping the steps. What do I get? Root 2 and root 2 is negative 2 plus 1 is minus 1. This is the equation of the tangent line to the curve at that point. Let's do one more, which involves the second derivative. Coffee appeared again. Give me some more coffee. Now we're going to do the formula, and we're going to do this in steps. One, I need the first derivative. That's going to be dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. <clears throat> this may be the problem where you want to do the soup and the preparing everything stuff and you want to chop it up if you want find the derivative in this it's just polynomial so it won't be too bad but in the next one you're definitely going to see i'm going to prep it before i put it into there don't try and make all these calculations in the machinery and carry it around that's what's so complicated i have pieces calculate those and then compute the fraction and that's what's nice for the brain this is not a fraction this is not a fraction compute them separately and then make the fraction of those let's do that dx dt is equal to one minus two t and dy dt is equal to 1 minus 3t squared. Therefore, this is this one, 1 minus 3t squared over 1 minus 2t. This is dy dx. Now we have to take the derivative of that, you see. What else do I need? I need dx dt. And I need the derivative of this. And now that I have it in the problem, now you can see that is the derivative with respect to t of 1 minus 3t over 1 minus 2t. Which is, that's why I was like, ah, here we go. Quotient rule, bottom d top minus top d bottom over bottom squared. I'm going to do it that way. Bottom, 1 minus 2t, d top, negative 6t minus top 1 minus 3 t squared d bottom negative 2 over 1 minus 2 t squared which is crap what negative 6 t plus 12 t squared mm -mm. plus 2 minus 6 t squared that seems right, over 1 minus 2t squared. This is d dt of dy dx equals, I got squished in there. What does that equal? That gives me two of those cancel, so I get 2 minus 6t plus 6t squared over 1 minus 2t squared. That thing is now d dt dy dx, which is hard to see in the symbolization when you've done this. That is a function of t, is what's hard to see. He's a function of t now, and then I took his derivative with respect to t. Therefore, now you can see I've chopped the pieces. I've done this before, so I know I need this thing over this is the second derivative now with respect to of y with respect to x. The second derivative with respect to x of y is equal to d dt of dy dx over dx dt, which is equal to this thing, 2 minus 6t plus 6t squared, 1 minus 2t, divided by this, which is 1 over 1 minus 2t, which is what? dy squared dx squared equals... 2 minus 6t plus 6t squared over 1 minus 2t cubed. This is the second derivative using those formulas. Chop it into pieces. Don't just try and shove steak down your mouth. It, it doesn't work that way. Cut it and then chew it and then eat it. Don't choke. Let x be f of t, y be g of t, be a curve gamma, which is parameterized from a to b with f prime 
and g prime f and g are continuously differentiable. What we mean by that is their derivatives exist and are continuous. So f prime and g prime are con continuous on a, b, and they're not both zero at the same time. Both not, not both zero. Assume gamma is traversed exactly once from a, or sorry, from f of a, g of a, to f of b, g of b. So again, this is what I was saying at the beginning. They don't want it where we've gone around three times when we go through our parameter value because that's not the arc length. That's the arc length four times if you go around that many times. So they're saying, I need to be able to describe the infinity sign with some parameterization, which we will later on, possibly at the end of this one. We'll get there. I'll at least show you what it looks like. We can't do much with it. But then for every point on there, what they're saying is as I take my parameter t and move it around, I want to be traversed exactly once on there. Then, and we won't derive this, but then we have a formula for arc length. Then the length of gamma is L equals the integral from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. This is the arc length of the parameterization. Let's try that. Ah, let's get into that. This is a Leibniz notation. Apparently he came up with calculus first. <laughs> Anyone who knows the story, you're going to get all kinds of people. No, he didn't. It was Newton. Yeah, that's why I did it. Or you could write this as x is f of t. So you could write that as f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared dt. This is Newton. It's Isaac. So this is arc length. I like Newton's notation better. And in that historical uh, anecdote, it's not really anecdotal, there is written evidence. Leibniz clearly did independently derive calculus. He didn't copy Newton in any way, shape, or form. We know this because Newton derived the derivative first. Leibniz derived the integral first. Leibniz were the curly wigs, like the judges. What is the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. You better know that, okay. D. C, the definition of pi is the ratio of the circumference, this number, I take a string and I would put it around there like that, and I take a string and I'd measure the D. That ratio is always pi in any circle. And what's D? Oh, two R's. And there is a derivation for you. Proofs of so I don't like proof. Yeah, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Because the circumference of a circle with radius r is 2 pi r, using the definition of what pi is. Who's pi? Some irrational transcendental number, which we're going to put in another video. Why did I just do that? They just gave me some new machinery that says they can calculate the arc length of stuff. I know the length of the arc of a circle is 2 pi r. Let's see if that cockamamie machinery will actually do what it says it will do, if I do it right. I also love these arguments. Like people come to me and they're like, I couldn't get this algorithm to work, so I don't think the algorithm works. It's like, no, how do you politely say no? <laughs> You're just not doing it right. <laughs> the algorithm is the Euclidean algorithm. You can't unprove that. Go try again. <laughs> So if I do this correctly, it better compute 2 pi r, because I already know what it is. Haha. <laughs> What's the parameterization of the circle? Polar coordinates. I'm just going to put t instead of theta. Let's put theta. We'll use polar coordinates. This is polar coordinates. What's the definition of the circle? What's the definition? 
I know. Everyone's like, I know what it is, but yeah. It's the locus of points equidistant from a given point called the center. It's all these points. Why? Because they're all the same distance away. Sorry. Sorry. That was the definition. It's the locus of point locusts. Back then, the terminology was like, what's a bunch of things that it, locusts? <laughs> so it's the collection of a, a locus of, of the locus of all the points, and if you take all of those, that's what a circle is. So any one of those are congruent. If I move that to any other circle that has radius r, they're going to coincide exactly. Mark Solomon, I'm a shout out. Start doing some Euclidean geometry. This problem will get a whole lot easier. I'm telling you. Coffee helps too. What do I know? It looks like I'm about to shoot. Where's the deer? Target. No, that's not what I want. Well, it is. <laughs> We're going to nail down this curve and then find its arc length. This is the circle. Radius R. So this is an R. Let's call that one R0. And then what am I going to do? That's also an R. And then this is, whoosh, and then I have an angle theta. Oh, and who is this guy? X. Who is this guy? Y. So Katoa. So Katoa. Show cacao. Show cacao. <laughs> You're like, what's that? Never mind. Watch the other video on trigonometry. You'll find out. Awesome. From this, I'm going to derive what the polar coordinates are. X. What is, okay, first of all, what's sine theta? What's cos theta? Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So X cos theta is x over r. So this immediately gives me in Cartesian x is r cos theta. Or you could use t if they want to keep with their parameter t. And then y from this we know sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So this gives us y is r cos theta. Where is theta ranging from? 0 to 2 pi. You can't use degrees in these types of problems. It has to be measured in radians. Boo on the Babylonians and their 360 degrees. Radians. Now that I have that, this is my parameterization of the curve gamma, which is the circle with radius r. Here I put it at the center so I could find a clever formula for it. What does that tell me? I have to find the arc length of this now. I have the bounds. And what do I have to compute? the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared. Because this is technically polar coordinates. We'll show you how to do this in general, but that's what's going to happen to everybody. x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta. And coincidentally, if you calculate this, you, but you'll see in this x squared plus y squared is r squared. That's going to happen right now anyways, I'll show you. Therefore, what is dx d theta? This is negative r sine theta. So dx d theta squared is r squared sine squared theta. Oh, I can just see the Pythagorean identity appearing already. Dance. dy d theta is equal to n not negative, no, that, this one's positive, r cos theta. So dy d theta squared is r squared cos squared theta. This says, again, what am I doing? Cutting carrots, cutting onions, cutting potatoes. Now we're going to put them into a bowl, put a little, maybe some chives and a few more things in there. Then I'm going to stir that. And then I don't know how to do the baking one. You've got to mix the wet stuff ingredients first and then the dry ingredients. And then at some critical point, you put those together. I don't know, but prepare it either way. You don't just like make a cake, be a cake, be a cake. Well, that's never going to hope. Be a solution to my problem. Yeah. Cut it up into some pieces, digest it. It's a whole lot easier. Now I see that I need this, the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared already doesn't look so bad because I've already computed these things. This is the square root now of r squared sine squared theta plus r squared cos squared theta, which is, I'll go slow, but I have r squared in both, so I'll factor that out. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. This is one Pythagorean identity equals the square root of r squared, which is the positive square root of r. It's absolute value, technically speaking. And why can I drop it in this case? Radius is positive. Radius is positive. So I can strip the absolute value, but technically do that in your brain every time. Anytime you square root, it's plus minus. 
not just this, just R. What do I do with this? Now I've prepared, look, this hot mess became R. <laughs> Yay. Now we're gonna integrate that. The arc length L, or the circumference of a circle, is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of the square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared d theta, which is equal to the integral from zero to two pi of r d theta, <laughs> yay, which is equal to what? r theta evaluated from zero to two pi and oh, the circumference of a circle is in fact two pi r. Intermediate mic drop, two pi r. And coincidentally, that's a pretty good segue to the next section, which is polar coordinates. Next time, what we're gonna do is we will do polar coordinates and in its full detail, I'll set up how we do this instead of the Cartesian coordinates, we'll describe every point in the plane as polar coordinates and show how for circular or types of cycloid and all of these types of curves, it's extremely useful to use the polar uh, expression for points in the plane instead of the old Cartesian. Please subscribe below, hit the notification bell to get notifications for other videos. Please visit us on Facebook at Adrian the Tutor or on Twitter at Tutor underscore Inc. I'll see you next time.